Hello everyone, this is Mr. Miller again. Last week we had talked about characteristics of amphibians. Today we're going to look at a very familiar amphibian, the frog. In seventh grade dissection, we often use the leopard frog for our dissections. And that is, this is a leopard frog. You can see that it's filled with these chromatophores. These things can fill in with a substance called melanin and allows them to blend in with their environment. So it's used as camouflage. It actually, if we take a look at the ventral side of the frog over here, this is actually a type of camouflage as well, because these frogs are often aquatic. They will uh, live in the water sometimes. And as they're swimming by, if there's a predator down below, this will allow it to blend in with the sky. If we take a look at the hind limbs here, you can see they are quite muscular and these are used for jumping. And then the forelimbs are much shorter, less muscular, and they are used to soften the landing. If we take a look at the feet on the hind limbs, you'll see that they are wet. And once again, that is because these are aquatic frogs and they would spend some time swimming. So this is almost like the flipper that you would use in a swimming pool. If we take a look at the feet on the forelimbs, we can actually tell, we can actually use this to tell the gender of the frog. If it has enlarged thumb pads, that's typically a male because that is used to grasp a hold of a female during mating purposes. If we take a look at the front face here, we're gonna see something called the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. This is often large and very large in bullfrogs and a little smaller in the leopard frogs, but it's usually a little bit larger than the eye still. And then we have the nostrils here, also known as the external nares, and this brings in air for respiration. If we take a look here at the bulging eyes, uh, they have a third eyelid called a nictitating membrane. Now, most amphibians have this, a lot of reptiles have it, a lot of birds, and even a few mammals have this. In fact, we even have the vestigial remnants of this. If you look in the corner of your eye, you'll see a little uh, thin piece of tissue there. That is actually probably a former nictitating membrane that we used to have that functioned uh, differently. Watch here this nictitating membrane pulling across. And down here on this video here, we can also see this nictitating membrane. It's very clear. It's actually something that they would use almost like goggles. You see here once again as it moves across. So that's the nictitating membrane. If we take a look inside the mouth of the frog, you're going to see the maxillary teeth right here. Now those would actually be difficult to see during a dissection. So what I would probably have you do is I actually have you feel them because they feel almost like sandpaper. So they're very, very small, but they do have these two larger teeth called bomarine teeth, which are actually pointed inward to help prevent the escape of prey. They are quite pointy to the touch. So when you touch those, you have to be careful because they are quite pointy. All well, these here are more like sandpaper, just kind of a rough surface to them. If we take a look here at the tongue, the tongue is attached at the front lower jaw. It's stretchy to catch prey, and it actually produces a very sticky saliva. So you can see that they actually use their eyes to help push that food back into the mouth. 
Now, also inside the mouth, we have the internal nares. We looked at the nostrils on the outside. Those were the external nares. Well, these are the internal nares, and that's where that air comes in. Now, you see the eustachian tube openings down here? If you've ever gone up in a plane, you may notice that your ears kind of get clogged up, and that's because the pressure from the outside of the ear and the inside of the ear is different. So sometimes we chew gum and things like that, and what that does is allows us to equalize that air pressure. Well, the same goes true for the frog here. If it's swimming in the water, it needs to equalize that water pressure on either side of the ear. So these eustachian tubes help to do that. Uh, also down here, we're going to see this opening. This is called the glottis. Because this controls the passage of air from the mouth to the lungs. So right inside that glottis is a little tube called the trachea, which will carry the air down to the lungs. And then we have the gullet here, which is the opening basically to the esophagus, and this takes food to the stomach. So let's take a look at the inside or the outside of the frog here. First of all, we're going to take a quick look here at the nictitating membrane, that third eyelid. And then right behind that third eyelid is the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. And then if we take a look at the front here, we're going to see that they are not webbed. And then we're going to see that the back hind limbs are webbed. And then we have the external nares or nostrils. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take and we would cut open the sides of the mouth here and we can flop the jaw open. And then we can take a look at the inside mouth area. To start off with, we will first take a look at the gullet, which is going to carry food down to the esophagus. And then we also can see the glottis there. That's more of a vertical opening, and that is going to actually carry air down to the lungs. Now there's a little spot in the back there where it looks kind of like the tongue's attached, but the tongue is actually attached to the front of the mouth. This is more or less like a kind of a muscle that springs it out, and then it can throw the food back and then go down to the gullet. Then we have the eustachian tube, which I said before, equalizes the air pressure. And if we take a probe through there, you'll see that the probe would actually that lead out to the tympanum. And up at the top here, we have the maxillary teeth that run along the upper jaw. They're very difficult to see. And then we have the vomerine teeth, which are the pointy teeth to prevent the escape of prey. Then we have the internal nares, which would lead out to the external nares. So internal nares, Eustachian tubes, bullet, glottis, tongue, maxillary teeth, bomarine teeth. And then on the outside here, we have the nictitating membrane, the tympanic membrane. And that is the outside of the frog. So if we take a look inside the frog, one of the first things you're going to notice is a heart. It is a three-chambered heart that receives and pumps blood. It has two atria. It has a right atria here, which receives deoxygenated blood. And then there's a left atrium here, which receives oxygenated blood from the lungs. Then we have the ventricle down here, which actually is what's going to pump the blood. So let's take a closer look at this on this diagram here. Here we have the right atria, which is going to be receiving blood. We have the left atria here, which is going to be receiving blood, and then we have a septum that divides it. And then down here we have the ventricle. So this is a three-chambered heart, which is not nearly as efficient as our four-chambered heart. So deoxygenated blood comes in here, oxygenated blood comes in here to the left atria. But then look what happens. When it goes down into the ventricle, they start to combine. And that's why this is not a very efficient heart. For our heart, it keeps those deoxygenated and oxygenated blood separately, but here they combine together, so not nearly as efficient. Also, when we cut open the frog, one of the first things you're going to notice is a very large three-lobed organ here called the liver. The liver produces a substance known as bile, which helps in fat digestion. Now, as that's produced, it is actually stored in a little organ underneath the liver, right in here called the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is there to store the bile that is produced by the liver, and then the gallbladder will deliver that to the small intestine. Also right here is the stomach. The stomach is where food is stored and it begins the process of chemical digestion. 
Then we have the small intestine. After the stomach, if the food moves into the small intestine, continues the digestion, the digestion of food and absorption of nutrients. Now, this is actually held together by a core of blood vessels in a filmy little uh, area called the mesentery, which is filled with blood vessels, which will pick up those nutrients and deliver them to the rest of the frog. Now, any of the undigested food will then move into the large intestine and that large intestine will move it to the rectum where it will eventually be pushed out through an area called the cloaca, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Now, of course, frogs need to breathe. Now, they get about 30% of their air from breathing through their skin, but the other 70% is brought in through those external nares into the internal nares, down through the glottis, and then down into the lungs. The lungs are just uh, two sacs that are connected through the mouth, through the glottis, and they take in the air that provides the oxygen to the frog. It's then put into the bloodstream and then sent to the heart where it's eventually pumped to the rest of the frog. So if we take a look here at this, you can see quickly here as we put a pipette in, we can actually expand those lungs. Look very closely. You can see those lungs expanding as we are blowing air into there. Also in the frog, you're gonna find fat bodies. These are very important for breeding purposes because when the mother becomes pregnant, she needs extra food and extra energy. But more importantly, it's also used for when frogs hibernate. They have to store some energy for that time period where they're not gonna be eating. So these fat bodies in the uh, winter time, right before hibernation are going to be quite, uh, uh, quite a lot of them. Whereas in the springtime, when they're coming out of hibernation, there's going to be a lot less because they've used up those fat bodies for energy. Also down here in this mesentery area, you're going to see a sliver of an organ. It's called the pancreas, and this produces enzymes for digestion. Now, there's another organ that's not shown here that looks almost like a red bean, and that is the spleen, and that is where uh, blood cells are produced and stored at. Then if we remove all those organs, we can actually find the kidneys. The kidneys will filter out waste from the blood, much the same way that our kidneys do. And then it produces a substance called urine, and that urine would go down through these little tubes called the ureter and carry this down to the urinary bladder, where once again, this would be excreted out through the cloaca. Now we can tell the outs from the outside of the frog, we can tell the gender by looking at the thumb pads. On the inside, it's much easier to tell. We can take a look here. This is filled with eggs, and this is a little area here called the oviduct. So this, of course, is a female. In this case, there are no eggs up in here, and right here are some testes, so this, of course, is a male. And once again, the sperm that's produced by the male or the eggs that are produced by the female are all removed through the cloaca. So let's take a look at that cloaca quickly. Right down in here in the frog, you're gonna see this area right here. This is the cloaca. And the clo word cloaca actually means sewer. And that's because everything is pushed out through here. The sperm for the males, the eggs for the females, the urine, the solid waste, all emptied out through that cloaca. So that's pretty much the frog. Tomorrow you're gonna to be doing a virtual dissection uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow, but let's just review our parts here a little bit. We have the liver, we have the heart, we have the fat bodies, we have the small intestine, and then of course underneath there are some things that we can't see like the lungs and the uh, kidneys and the urinary bladder. So this is our introduction to the frog parts. It is now your job to go and complete the Google form. There are eight questions on the Google form. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.